are various amendments to the zoning ordinance, <coughs> including floodplain standards, parking standards, manufactured home standards, AG district, GC and GC district, and Dave, I will also hand this over to you. Thank you. The uh, primary purpose for these amendments are uh, an amendment to the flood hazard uh, regulations for the county. The uh, Division of Water Department of Natural Resources uh, provides for the county and the city and all jurisdictions a uh, regulations that the uh, jurisdictions uh, enact in order to protect flood hazard areas. And so uh, we recently received a, a correspondence from the state. They said they have uh, provided a, uh, some updates, some revisions to their uh, so-called model ordinance uh, that they use for all jurisdictions and uh, requested that the uh, county uh, review these and uh, adopt them as our flood hazard uh, protection uh, ordinance. So it, it, it is uh, being proposed as a complete um, revision to the FP01, the um, flood, pro flood protection provisions for uh, Whitley County. Um, in general, rather than uh, reading through all of these, um, it, it primarily is about seven more pages of definitions. For some reason, they've decided that it's necessary for them to define uh, a number of different terms, whereas before we had maybe a page or two of definitions. So primarily, that's, that's what the bulk of the, uh, of the new uh, changes are. Um, as far as the day-to-day uh, -day ordinance requirements, what, what do people uh, be, get affected by, and primarily I'm talking about the areas around the lakes. Those are the areas where people are uh, building, want to uh, you know, tear down, new build, or add on additions. That's usually where we uh, apply these provisions. It's not really around any um, flood areas like Eel River or uh, a Blue River or uh, you know, any of the other rivers. Uh, they're, they're not such a problem, even though there are floodplains around those and those are protected. Certainly, the, as far as our impact of it, it's around the lakes. And, and generally up there, it always has been, if you want to build in the lake, you're in a floodplain, you have to build two feet above the established high water level, 100 year flood level of that body of water. And the state gives us those, that information. We, if anybody is, is in a designated floodplain, we check those, we make sure that they're two feet above, uh, and then we can proceed. If not, then they have to go to the state, send the information into the state to either verify that the uh, information is wrong on our maps, they're not in the flood, flood plain, but they were uh, designated as such, and, and then they can get themselves out of the flood plain, or if they are, then they just have to either build above or they don't build in, at, at that level. Um, that isn't changing, that's still the same. Okay. Uh, one other item that has changed on here, there, there always has been an exception for a uh, what's called a one-time um, small project. And in the past, it's been $1,000. If any project is $1,000 or less, you can go ahead and, and build, even if you're in the floodplain area, whether it's a shed or a, a, a deck or, or whatever. In the past, you know, 20 years ago, $1,000 contained quite a bit. Today, there's not a whole lot you can do for $1,000. And so it really hasn't been any kind of an exception. This ordinance and the state has decided to change that exception to 400 square feet. So instead of a dollar amount for uh, people to do a smaller project on their property without um, having to, you know, raise up the garage two feet above the level of the driveway and you know and still be able to get into it or or a shed or or something. Um, something of a minor type of a nature is the way this, the state feels and again that can be done one time on a property so so that's that's the 
you know, from an operational standpoint, from the staff standpoint, that's what I see as the, the, the biggest change in this. Otherwise, it's basically the same. The state has experienced some floods over the last several years. Luckily, not in our area so much, but um, some of the other parts of the state have. And so I think they, they want to uh, uh, try to make sure that their ordinance is kept uh, up to date and, and is the most current and, and um, feasible ordinance that's available to us. So, um, if anybody has any questions on this, I'll be glad to try to, you know, answer. Um, but uh, otherwise, there there really isn't that much that much of a difference between the two. Like I say, except for the definitions, and probably an attorney got involved in that. So that's my guess. <laughs> No offense. <laughs> There's a ton of definitions. I read the yeah. Yeah. It's like, wow. Yeah. I know. I, I couldn't even understand half of some of what they were asking or telling us. So, Again, we really don't do a lot of this ourselves. It, it, it basically is driven by the state. And to tell you the truth, that there really is a problem with it, that's, that's not a bad thing in, in this case. I mean, we don't always like the state telling us you know what what to do most of us don't at all but in this case I think it's a good idea because they're the ones that are in charge of, of the, the flood areas and and uh, I think that's the way that's the way it needs to be but we did advertise for this it has been in the newspaper so this is a, a public hearing on this ordinance as well as and while I'm speaking I'll just go over briefly the the other changes they they were just some minor we call them minor adjustments or you know things that Kathy and I have observed over the years where we look at it and say well that you know we ought to fix that or why is that this way how did how did that happen um, and so we we've, we've decided to uh, take the opportunity you know while we're opening the ordinance up for amendment we just decided to go ahead and try to uh, add uh, some or, or uh, some wording in it to maybe clarify uh, this as far as the um, Parking lot setback, we realized there we didn't have a minimum side and rear yard setback for parking lots. We had a front yard setback, but nothing on the side. So we've decided to add a, a minimum setback of five feet for that. So is that, that it, standard? Yes. Yeah, it is. Now, certainly it could be more than that, but that's standard. The, the city uses that standard, and I think most, most <coughs> urban areas do. Um, in, a, in a rural area, I don't know that it would, um, again, make... A whole lot of difference but that that at least gives some distance away so that let's say water is not running you know right off onto somebody else's property <coughs> maintain it on your own the uh, second change is for um, adding a recreational vehicle to the definition of, uh, of the list of manufactured home mobile home and recreational vehicle that uh, may not be used as an accessory structure in any district <coughs> And we've decided to change the listing for uh, what's listed now as temporary second dwelling unit under special exception in the agricultural district to list that as secondary dwelling unit. It, it may not make a whole lot of difference. It's just that we do have people coming in, going before the Board of Zoning Appeals, asking for a guest cottage. Um, residents in uh, uh, say above a, a garage um, something like that and so we've just decided that it, it may not be temporary and the board may not want to limit it or restrict it to being temporary that there are some circumstances and occasions where it might be uh, more than appropriate so we're just kind of loosening that up I guess and then the last one is to add dwelling single-family dwelling under the special exception list of uses in the general commercial district. That and just didn't exist anywhere before? It did. Actually, I think it did, and we probably, uh, uh, un when we switched over uh, from the old um, business district designation, I, I think it was, and we just either, it just didn't make the list on the other one that we used. So we, we find... In many cases, properties are zoned commercial, but they're not used as a commercial purpose. So it may be some future designation for it, or maybe a future use. Um, 
and you know it, it just isn't in most circumstances it's not inappropriate to have a residential use in a commercial district so those are just some of the minor adjustments that we thought we would uh, propose for the commission to make to the zoning ordinance I do have a question on the chapter 5.18 manufactured homes is there a time limit on, on that how long can they leave recreational vehicles for X amount of time or then you do something about it or at this point in time all we're saying is how it can be used okay as far as parking on your property we don't have a restriction on that in in the uh, in the zoning ordinance it can be if you know if you own one and you park it on your property we're not saying it have to you have to move it you just can't use it for storage you can't just say well I don't I can't afford to build a pole building and so I'm just going to stack all my stuff inside this thing and ends up being uh, not the most attractive or use, like use of property shed and... yeah mm -hmm. yeah as far as utilizing the RV on your property um, at this though they're not designed or manufactured to be a permanent dwelling unit and so um, if we discover that somebody is then we make sure that they don't you know take it to a park and you know where, where they belong rather than you know out back but we do need to open it up for yes yeah. that was next before we're done here okay so this is a public hearing on uh, the amendments to the zoning ordinance as presented by Dave so if anyone has any comments questions concerns about the amendments to the zoning ordinance chapter 5.9 5.10 5.18 or chapter 3 the AG or DC commercial district you can be heard we're not talking about when I'm not talking about when. <laughs> okay. You need to come to the podium and state your name and address, please. Okay. It's June Mitchell, and I live on 1000 South. I just had a question about the, I don't own an RV, okay, so it doesn't affect me at all. But you said they can't put anything in their RV? Use it as a storage facility. But how would you know that they're putting stuff in it? And storage, storing stuff in it. If we discovered it, then it would be in violation. If it's, okay. if, if, you know, if it's used and it, there's no indication for it, and we do not get a uh, complaint or called on it, then we're we're not going to go out and look for people storing stuff in their RV. Okay. It, well, I a, guess I didn't feel. I I don't understand why you need to. Um, Put something in there that says they can't do it. Since if, if nobody can see it anyhow, I mean, that's all. Just, that's just. Well, you'd be surprised. <laughs> okay. I don't own our RV. I'm yeah. not a junk collector. It, it's just, entirely possible. So. I mean, I understand if it's stacked outside of it and all around it. Nobody wants to live next to that. Um, but. And seriously, that can happen pretty quickly and so that's usually the indication that something else is going on and so this is just a way to try to um, pre prevent something you know worse from happening okay. uh, a junk and trash occurrence to happen happen on you know, uh, people's property okay I just didn't see the need to mention anything about junks um, stacked inside that's all just curious I just have a question on the living above a garage out on the lake. There's a couple people built nice garages, but they were told they couldn't have anybody stay overnight and the top part is so large. Does that affect that? This, I don't know. What this provision will not. Okay. This only applies to a commercial district. Okay. Got it. 
Yes. Yeah. Because they were told that it had to have so many feet in the yard to be allowed to live above right. or have guests stay overnight. And right. they didn't qualify. They got these nice huge garages. But yeah, there is a, that's a, a sec separate section in, uh, usually it's a lake residential right. zoning district. Okay. So we're, we're not amending that, we're not changing it, uh, we're not doing anything with that provision of the ordinance. Okay, just clarify that. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, we'll close the public portion of this hearing and open it up to the commission for any questions, comments, concerns. Dave, most of the time on these uh, flood things, if there's a, the way I read it was if there's a problem, it usually goes to the state of Indiana, right? Yes. It doesn't come to us. And That's right. And if it, it. it complies, then with all the ordinance, then we issue the permits and you know go on with it. Everything is in order, what the state says. If anybody wants to do something different, they're just automatically referred to the state. Okay. Yeah. Now, there are provisions in there for the BZA to, to uh, do a variance, but fortunately, we, have, we haven't had to do that. And the state really doesn't um, suggest that the BZA gets involved. One of the various that. Is pretty specific. Yes, they're right? very specific, and the the findings are very specific on those two. Yeah. So I, I I don't think that that there would be any any difference there at all. It still will be referred to the state for anything in in uh, out of variance from from the ordinance. Dave, just so we're clear, there are a number of pages here. This text all came directly from the state. Yes, it did. <laughs> Do we have to handle each one of these individually, or is it all one? I assume we have to have an approval or yeah. just put it on. I would think that you could do it all as one, all one motion, because we'll put it together as one single ordinance, referring it to the county commissioners. Um, so I, I don't think we need to, to, to do it. You can do it that way, you know, if you so choose, or I, I, I guess if you'd want to make some amendments or change it, um, or, or not approve of, you know, some particular specification, but I think you can do it as a motion to to approve the amendments as you know as submitted as listed as you you know as you right. you've seen them i'd suggest if anyone wants anything changed that we get that out on the table and then if everybody agrees to to a change then we would have a motion to for a favorable recommendation correct yes Does anyone, would anyone like to propose any changes to what's been presented? Looks like it sounds good. <coughs> anyone care to make a motion? Make a motion to send it to commissioners as is. Second. Motion's been made by Dave, seconded <coughs> by Dave. That would be Schilling and Addison respectively. <coughs> to uh, send a favorable recommendation for these amendments to the zoning ordinance to the commissioners. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. Unanimous. Thank you.